Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I'm Amy Nay. So where are they now? Women who were born and raised in polygamy or plural marriage communities here in Utah and beyond. 15 years after the imprisonment of FLDS leader Warren Jeffs. Many left the FLDS church, but some of them have come back to their communities and out of the shadows to help others. Oh my gosh, we have come so far. We're leaps and bounds ahead. I'm happy to have a different lifestyle. These three women all grew up in polygamous communities, married and had children, and then their lives took dramatic turns. In this 360, how they've come out of the shadows to help others, each in their own way. We've been able to serve hundreds, probably thousands of people, and, and it's a huge, huge part of recovery. Shirley Draper from the nonprofit Cherish Families offers housing and health care, mental health services, and legal advice to those in polygamous cultures, giving them, according to their mission statement, the tools and resources they need for generational success. Well, I feel like our community is doing great. I feel like we're moving forward in a progressive direction and it's just it's good. Donia Jessup is mayor of Hildell, the first woman in that role in the town's century plus existence, which was once run along with the twin town of Colorado City by Warren Jeffs. Jeffs was head of the FLDS church before his arrest in 2006 and eventual imprisonment. Jessup left the church under Jeffs but has since returned to the town of about 3,000, she says, to help her people. It's a rich story and a rich heritage. Mary Jane Blackmore's story is similar to Shirley and Dania, but she was raised in the polygamous community of Bountiful in British Columbia, Canada, where she too has since returned, no longer religious or part of a plural family, but to be a part of the community where she was raised and to teach the children in their school and hopefully, she says, open their minds. Go be free. <laughs> recently publishing a book, a memoir, Balancing Bountiful, what she learned from feminism from her polygamous grandmothers. As a young woman, I was highly influenced by these women. I saw them as vital and powerful. Critical when she was growing up of her grandma. It took years in my own journey to be able to look at her life and see ways that she had, um, I would say, advocated for women and herself and improved the lives of those around her. Her grandmother, one of five wives who had 31 children here. One was Mary Jane's father, Winston Blackmore, who then had 150 children. Celebrating even such an unusual heritage that has been so vital in creating me. At 16, she was wed in a church-assigned marriage, and they had two children. They followed the FLDS prophet to Utah, but it was in a sermon she attended where she says she realized this wasn't for her. I was holding my six-week-old son in my arms, and Warren Joss was at the pulpit giving this prayer to ask for the destructions of the enemy of the, of the priesthood. And for me, Everything about the experience was so different than the world I grew up in. She and her husband left the faith and eventually divorced. She says she thought polygamy would just come to an end, but it hasn't. Although she says she now sees real change and more choice. I felt a huge shift in our community. Something Mayor Jessup applauds. But choice. Choice has been the big thing just to be able to choose. Like, I tell people all the time, I wake up every day so excited to be alive. And it's simple. It's like, I get to choose the clothes I wear today. I get to choose where I go, who I talk to. And that might seem like a simple thing, but for me and a lot of my friends, it's a big thing. Jessup, who says she was locked out of city offices on her first day on the job and had most of her staff quit in protest, is now running for a second term. Just getting people's minds wrapped around that there's a woman in that leadership position, that's been good. <laughs> Donia married her childhood sweetheart when she was 17 and had 10 children when church leadership decided her nine-year-old daughter would be put with a different family. That's when I said I'm done. She moved to Santa Clara less than an hour away, but a world apart. It was an interesting transition. After four years, she and her husband decided it was time to come back. And I didn't go back to become mayor. I went back to help rebuild a community and found out that there were four seats that were up for the vote that year. And we started a grassroots coalition and 
the rest is history. She says for her, coming out of the shadows has meant pursuing her passion, assuming a leadership role, something she hopes more women will do. Figuring out who you are, you bet that's coming out from, from the shadows. Adding it's an exciting time in her community and beyond. It's not just the FLDS and the ex-FLDS. I think of women all over the world. It is, it's time for us. And what's interesting is the more we do it, the more comfortable everyone else is to do it. Is that something that hasn't happened previously with this population? When Shirley Draper left with her four children, you two with special needs and all under the age of 10, she thought she'd never look back, tackling the hardest thing she'd ever done. I had no rental history. I had no credit history. I had no income. I didn't even have a bank account. But she found a way to start a new life in St. George, not expecting what would come next. I started having people come and find me and say, how did you make that work? I need help. So she got educated, getting her bachelor's and then master's and launched the now federal, state and privately funded Cherish Families 501c3. So we'll provide a parenting class and healthy relationships class and a financial literacy class and women's self-protection and things. Steps, she says, toward a brighter future. So the work that I do is to bring people out of the shadows, bring them into the sunshine. It's the best disinfectant. Now, recent changes in Utah law have lessened penalties for polygamy, and Shirley tells me that that allows more people to come forward in possible cases of abuse. She says that is something that has been a problem in the past. Now, if you or someone you know needs help, you can contact her organization at cherishfamilies.org, and we can link you there at fox13now.com.